Uh, we've got an unusual show tonight in this sense. Uh, it's a big show. We've got two exclusive stories tonight. Uh, one of them sort of a run-of-the-mill exclusive, and one of them not at all a run-of-the-mill exclusive. Uh, the more standard story that we've got, although it is exclusive to us tonight, is some brand new polling. Uh, it's brand new polling. You've not heard it anywhere else. We're going to be breaking it on the show tonight. Um, you keep hearing this year about how American voters dislike their candidates. Candidates have bad favorability ratings. Well, tonight we're going to be breaking news in some brand new polling that shows, I think for the first time I've ever seen, a favorability number for a candidate that registers as nil. It registers so low it could not even be measured. So we've got that sort of astonishing new data ahead. Uh, but the other exclusive we've got tonight is a more unusual one, and it's on a story that just will not quit and that honestly is getting worse now over time and not better. And honestly, this shouldn't be the biggest deal in the world. This should have been something that was just done, checked off the list, and finished a long time ago. This should be standard stuff. I mean, for relevant context here, in 2008, Barack Obama, running for president, Democratic nominee for president, right? He released a summary of his medical records. It was uh, released by his uh, physician, somebody who'd been treating him since 1987, gave a summary of his overall medical history, gave the date of his most recent checkup, gave uh, Obama's blood pressure, pulse, body fat, you know, the basic lab results, cholesterol, prostate test results, uh, nothing graphic, but it overall sums up. Overall good physical and mental health. It was a, a page and a half-ish from candidate Obama's doctor. That was 2008. And that was very similar to the page and a half-ish that we got four years later from Mitt Romney's doctor uh, when Mitt Romney was running for president in 2012. Again, nothing graphic, but okay, he takes low-dose aspirin and he takes Lipitor for his cholesterol and we get his colonoscopy results and his EKG results. We get a little family history in terms of, of heart disease. And that letter from Mitt Romney's doctor, that, that runs a page and a half. And in the end, we get the bottom line. No physical impairments. Mitt Romney is fine. There have been candidates who have released more information than that when they've been running for president. John McCain, both when he ran in 2000 and when he ran in 2008, he made a big deal out of releasing actually more than a thousand pages of documents from his health records each time. And I think that's because people had questioned his health. Also because John McCain has an unusual medical history. He's a man who survived prolonged and terrible torture as a prisoner of war for years. He's also a cancer survivor. He's had a lot of different kinds of skin cancer. So I think John McCain was a bit of an exception. He really did produce reams of very detailed health records. But the reason he did that was basically to show that he's fine. That, you know, he's been through a lot, but he's healthy. Incidentally, I should say it is Senator McCain's 80th birthday today. Happy birthday, Senator. I mean, the point is that releasing your health records when you're running for president, it shouldn't be a turning point in your campaign. It shouldn't be something that people, you know, wait for and then it's bigger news once they got them, right? It's like releasing your tax returns, ahem, if you have normal tax returns. It should be a one-day story. You release that information, people read it, they do their due diligence. You know, we all read these reports to see if there's anything surprising or disqualifying, but basically you check the box, move on. This should not be a story, but this year it is definitely a story. On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton last July released a doctor's letter very much in keeping with what has become the modern standard, basically the same kind of information released by Barack Obama in 2008 and Mitt Romney in 2012. It was a page and a half-ish from her longtime doctor. We get the rundown on the concussion she had in 2012. We find out she takes a thyroid drug. She takes antihistamines for allergies. We get uh, the date of her last exam, blood pressure, EKG results, cholesterol, and we get a bottom line, a healthy female fit to serve. That happened last July. That's in keeping with modern practice for presidential candidates. Last July is when Hillary Clinton's doctor's letter was released. Now, Friday night on this show, we played a little bit of an interview with Donald Trump's doctor. This is the doctor who wrote the medical letter that was released about Donald Trump. And on Friday night, when we played just a little squib of that interview, when we went back and compared it to the timeline, we noticed something really strange about this part of the interview. What was the generation of this letter? How did that come about? Just tell that story. Um, I guess he called and he said the Clinton organization was going to publish a letter on her health. 
and I know her physician and I know some of her health history which is really not so good. So I said, why not? He said, I would do that for you too, if you needed a job. And so um, the car was waiting outside? He was At the end of the day, they came to get their letter. And so just tell me about the time, the time crunch, like five minutes, or you wrote it quickly. No, I thought about it all day, and at the end, um, I get rushed and I get anxious when I get rushed, so I try to get the four or five lives done as fast as possible that they would be happy with. But it was based on it's your evaluation. True. It's all true. Okay, couple of things here. I mean, aside from him commenting on the health of someone who's not his patient, right, saying, I know some of her doctors, uh, I, I, I know her physician, I know some of her health history, which is really not so good. Aside from the propriety of that, a couple of things, right? Why did the Trump campaign need its medical letter in such a rush? On the timing of this, this part really doesn't make any sense. I guess he called and he said the Clinton organization was going to publish a letter on her health. That's how he sets up why they're in such a rush. Right? Doesn't make any sense at all. The Trump campaign released their medical letter from Trump's doctor in December. He says he wrote it all in a rush that day because they needed it right away because the Clinton organization was going to publish a letter on her health and so they needed to come out with the Trump letter. That makes no sense in December. Hillary Clinton had already published a letter on her health five months earlier from her doctor. So why was it all of a sudden a rush where they had to finish it in five minutes with a, a, somebody in a, a limo or a black car waiting downstairs, idling, waiting on this letter, and he only had five minutes to do it, and it was such a rush, when her letter had been out for five months? Trying to get to the bottom of this, we have now obtained more of the doctor's comments to NBC News about the origin of his document attesting to Donald Trump's health. And again, this is the only document that we've got attesting to Donald Trump's health. If elected, Donald Trump would be the oldest person ever sworn in as president of the United States. We've just got this one document. And now we know a lot more about this document. I think if the health of the candidates is going to be an issue in this campaign, if Donald Trump is going to demand more health records be released by Hillary Clinton, as if hers are somehow a scandal and a departure from modern norms here, then I think you should see this. We've got extensive remarks here. Um, this starts here with the doctor reading from the letter that he wrote to attest to Donald Trump's fitness for the presidency. I've been the personal physician of Mr. Donald J. Trump since 1980. His previous physician was my father, Dr. Jacob Bornstein. Over the past 39 years, I'm pleased to report that Mr. Trump has had no significant medical problem. Mr. Trump has had a recent complete medical exam that showed only positive results. The sentence is probably not right, but written correctly, but I got a D in German. Actually, his blood pressure is 110 over 65, and his laboratory tests are astonishingly excellent. So the Trump doctor is saying there, he makes a joke about getting bad grades in German, which I don't, I don't know. But uh, he says, when he gets to the part, Mr. Trump has had a recent complete medical exam that show only positive results. He gets to that part and he says, mm, maybe didn't write that. Maybe that's not right. It's written correctly, but it mm, didn't. So he shows a little regret at that statement when he says that Donald Trump showed only positive results. Maybe that wasn't right. Then he continues. He has no history of ever using alcohol or tobacco products. If elected, Mr. Trump, I can say unequivocally, will be the healthiest individual ever elected to the presidency. Dr. Bornstein, uh, phrases like astonishingly, astonishingly excellent seem a little bit over the top to some people. What do you think about that? Is that the way that you write most of your medical letters? No, but for Mr. Trump, I wrote that letter that way. Is he, did, would he, did he ask you to uh, describe it that way, or do you, do you pick up his kind of language by spending time I with him? I think I probably picked up his kind of language and then just interpreted it to my own. The language used by the doctor who has, again, given us the only documentation of Donald Trump's health that we've got, he says he maybe picked up that language from Donald Trump himself. And 
that is unusual for a uh, a scientist, right, for a medical professional. Uh, it has also raised questions about the circumstances under which this strange letter was produced. And that has now been explained a couple of different ways by Donald Trump's doctor. Did Donald Trump, oh. did Donald Trump write that letter for you? Or, or have any input into that letter? I think that's what people are kind of curious about. Um. Dr. Bornstein wrote that letter. Okay, Dr. Bornstein wrote that letter. It, and it's an oath. It's I an wrote oath. that letter in a very good frame of mind, sitting here and smiling as I wrote it, too, to be quite honest with you. The letter does sound peculiar. I know there was a physician on television on another network who was saying no one would say uh, positive results. You know what? How much Dr. time Bornstein. do you have to right. sit here in five minutes? Right. And I got five minutes to write that letter. Okay, and... Unproofed. Right. It was so never proofed. I got five minutes to sit right at this desk and write that letter while the driver waited for it. So you got a request from Mr. Trump to please have a we letter? Needed, everybody needs a letter. Everybody needs a letter. Hillary needed a letter. And Donald needed a letter. So he came to you and, and called. So he said, Dr. Bornstein... Doctor, <laughs> and he needed his letter. And he, we got his letter. And my husband does have a sense of humor, and so the astonishing word could sound however you interpret it. It's Dr. Bornstein wrote that. This is Dr. Bornstein with his long hair and his earrings. <laughs> you know, and it's not who he is. He's a brilliant diagnostician, and he's brilliant at his craft. This is the Dr. Bornstein's wife uh, really st standing up for him there. She works at the doctor's office. Um, Dr. Bornstein himself saying there, though, doc the, the letter was unproofread. He said it was never proofed. It was such a rush. He previously said that he f finished it in a frame of mind where he wasn't rushed at all and he was happy sitting there smiling. The circumstances of this letter being produced to attest to Donald Trump's health, they still don't make much sense. Why was there such a rush? to the point of creating anxiety or a very relaxed frame of mind, depending on which part of the interview that we're in. Why was there such a rush? Why was there such a rush that the letter could not even be proofread? There was such a rush five months after Hillary Clinton published her doctor's letter. It's the timing of this. It makes, it makes no sense at all. And here's the larger issue. What does this doctor actually think about Donald Trump's health? I mean, he's, we just heard there from the doctor and his wife that when he called Donald Trump astonishingly excellent, the doctor's wife says that was meant to be funny. That was meant to be a joke. Okay, well, what are his lab test results? If they're not astonishingly excellent, if that was hilarious, how are his lab test results? Watch what the doctor actually says in detail about how healthy he thinks Donald Trump is. Um, so you think Donald Trump is healthy enough to be president. I think he's physically healthy enough do you have to be any president. Do you have any medical concerns about him? Um, medical concerns about him. I guess you have the same average medical concerns you have for a 70-year-old man. The only other question that I think people are curious about is, you know, if he would be the most, the healthiest person ever to take office. Well, I think most of the list of presidents of the United States from Woodward Wilson, who was walking around with a, with a hemorrhage in his brain, and Eisenhower with polio, and one after the other, we have not had very, uh, I mean, these people are older and they develop adult illnesses. I don't think there's the healthiest person. You'd have to elect a, you'd have to elect a 22 year old. How could you know that he would be in the best health of any president uh, in the history of the United States? I like that sentence. They're all, I like that sentence, to be quite honest with you, and all the rest of them are either sick or dead, so it's, uh, we've had everything as president, people with dementia, and people with tumors, we've had everything as president, we've had psychotic, and paranoids, and we've had all in my own little lifetime, and we've had plenty of very disturbed people, and they've usually been in Fortunately, been held in check. So you've been treating him for 30 years, and what's your assessment of his health? Um, 
His health is excellent, particularly his mental health. <laughs> he thinks he's the best, but it works out just fine. He said to me at the door, hey, Harold, you think I should run for president? And I said, I don't know. He says, but I think it's a good idea. So it's... And do you think he would be fit to be the president of the United States? Yeah, I think he would be as fit as all of us. Who's fit out in the street? There's an incidence and prevalence of disease. The incidence of disease is what's out there. And I think the prevalence is what walks into the office that you identify. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? He's a 70-year-old man. You have the same average medical concerns. Yeah, for a 70-year-old man. Also, you know, who among us is fit to be president? Who knows what people are walking around with? And besides, all the other presidents are sick or dead. By the way, Eisenhower didn't have polio. So, <laughs> yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Is he fit? Hmm? And that actually is the medical assessment of Donald Trump's health, according to the only person who has ever publicly attested to it, and who did so in a half-page letter, which he now says was partially a joke. And who knows, really, about Donald Trump's health? Previous presidents are all sick or dead. So of course he's better off than all of But the Trump campaign for president has tried to make a scandal of Hillary Clinton's health. They have tried to make a scandal of Hillary Clinton's health letter from her doctor. They're demanding that she release more medical records because she hasn't done it right. It's astonishing. It's just amazing. We've got more ahead tonight. Stay with us. We've had everything as president. We've had psychotic and paranoids, and we've had all of my own little life done. And we've had plenty of very disturbed people, and they've usually been, unfortunately, been held in check. You like Donald Trump. Would you vote for Donald Trump? I like Trump? Donald Trump because I, he likes me. And that's what my mother would say. She says, they like you, Harold, so you like them. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.